This video will discuss the conjugate gradient method for geometry optimization and note its improvements relative to steepest descent. Okay, so as we said, for molecules, we're typically interested in what is the lowest energy structure of a molecule in a given region of, of its configuration space. So if we have n atoms, we typically have 3n coordinates, so our potential energy depends on 3n coordinates, much more than the simple one-dimensional function drawn out here. But we want to reach that bottom of the, of the well there. We want to get to a minimum energy structure, because usually those are some of the most interesting structures of a, of a molecule to look at and, and calculate some various things from. So we discussed previously steepest descent, which is kind of the simplest or most naive method of going about finding where these minimum energy structures are. And conjugate gradient is a slightly more advanced energy minimization algorithm than that. And the key difference is that conjugate gradient is going to take into account in some effect the step history in order to accelerate the convergence of our optimization. Okay, so starting out, um, the it's basically the same algorithm as steepest descent for the most part. As I mentioned that um, the algorithm I displayed in the previous video for steepest descent is actually the general geometry optimization algorithm except for the displacement step for how when you calculated the energy and the gradient, how does that how does that affect the displacement of your atoms towards the next structure? Okay, so it's the same algorithm. Well, say same algorithm as steepest descent, SD, except for we have that in steepest descent, as I said, that displacement step, we have some vector x which represents all of our coordinates, all of our atomic positions, x, y, and z of all n of them, that the next step is equal to the current step minus some value gamma times the gradient of the energy function we have. So our energy function in n coordinates, <coughs> the gradient of that multiplied by some scale factor gamma, which we have some various uh, linear algebra based methods to find. Okay, so what is different about conjugate gradient? So in conjugate gradient, that next iteration of the geometry, that next displacement, is going to be the previous displacement minus, we still have some scale factor like gamma n, but now we have parentheses del v, the gradient of the energy for all your dimensions, plus some factor beta times this vector, which we'll call h, n minus one. And this h is kind of like a history function. So there are various ways to get this h, just as there are various ways to get this gamma and that gamma from steepest descent. But this beta is kind of the magnitude to which whatever function we're using to describe the history of steps we've taken, this beta is going to, is going to deviate from our steepest descent step by, by this amount, which is scaled by beta. So beta controls the, the amount that we're going to be stepping away there. <clears throat> okay, and then so h, how does this h get updated between successive steps? So h, I'll kind of, when I'm trying to draw these in bold, kind of indicating that they're vectors. So we'll say h of n equals del v of xn, so the gradient of the current step plus beta of times h of n minus 1. So it's kind of telling us what is the history of what's been going on here with the various steps. Okay, so I'm not going to go into um, all of the advanced notes about how you actually calculate or could pick various methods for gamma, beta, all these kinds of things. So there are various methods, as I mentioned, for for gamma, for beta, and for h naught. 
the, va the value of h that you have on the first step is often called um, a preconditioner, and a lot of conjugate gradient algorithms talk about various preconditioning things, so it's basically what is your choice for h in your initial case, because as we saw here, it depends on what the previous one is, so you have to make some choice about what it is initially. Okay, and then there are more advanced methods than that, uh, which include more advanced methods for various kinds of these things. They all look something like this. It's all your your next step is your previous step plus some displacement. So more advanced methods than conjugate gradient even have more advanced methods for getting effectively what are very similar measures. Uh, you know, something which depends on the energy, the energy gradient, and the history of all the steps that you have. So various more advanced methods for geometry optimization, for generating minimum energy, low energy structures. Those include things like newton raphson If you've ever done the newton raphson method in calculus for a one-dimensional function, you can do the analog here for a 3n dimensional function for our 3n coordinates of our n atoms. You can do things like uh, rational function optimization, or RFO. Uh, RFO is more commonly the kind of default algorithm that's used inside of a lot of computational chemistry packages, things like uh, Gaussian, QChem, Psi4, any kind of computational chemistry package, and, and various things beyond that. Some, some people have just tweaked around and found some things that work better for the particular kinds of energy functions that molecules have. Sometimes, you know, you get lucky by, by messing around with some things. Um, some are just more advanced numerical techniques. It all depends. In the end, whatever gets you to your desired structure the, the quickest and most reliably is, is what's best to use. So depending on how specific your problem is, you might have more specific uh, things to tweak in there. And then there's also, as I mentioned in the previous video, you can make various choices about how tight you want your gradient converged to zero, how small you want your energy to change between steps of the algorithm, and how small you want your displacement to be for you to be considered converged. So the main improvement for conjugate gradients relative to steepest descent is if I had even a fairly simple function like this, some low order polynomial function for my energy, if I started up here on, on my, uh, on my function, uh, steepest descent would still take many iterations to get to the bottom. It doesn't, it's not very good at effectively going to the bottom, even for quite smooth, simple functions. As it gets towards the bottom, it gets very, very slow. Conjugate gradient for a function that looks this simple might get very, very accurate results in as few as two or three steps. And that's because the method, the method for getting these betas uh, uses a lot of the information about further curvature of the system. So if the curvature doesn't vary a lot in terms of like second derivatives, third derivatives, the like, if that's not very complicated, it's going to get there very, very quickly. So conjugate gradient is an extremely rapid method to get towards the bottom of things like polynomial functions. Whereas for more complex things like a general molecular potential energy surface, it might have various cases where it gets confused as well, which is why sometimes some more advanced things are used in general for those types of geometry optimizations.